Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. So today's video, I've been thinking back to when I first started watching TV and movies and one of my earliest memories is the TV series Roots, uh, the landmark television series adapted from Alex Haley's novel um, and it featured the actor LeVar Burton as Kunta Kinte. Um, so yeah, I've been thinking about his filmography um, and just wanted to do this video today just to talk about his television movies that he made in the 70s. Um, a bit of a random subject I know but uh, nonetheless that's how my brain worked and I just wanted to look at these films. Um, so if you know these films please do let me know. Um, made for TV movies particularly back from the 70s and 80s these are harder to watch. I don't know if they're screened on cable TV uh, much anymore. I don't have cable TV so I don't know about that. Um, but, uh, but yeah in general a lot of made for TV movies don't tend to get sort of restored or um, put out on DVD and Blu-ray and things like that. So yeah, please do let me know if you know these. Um, but nonetheless, let's get started on this. Because uh, I think that these TV movies from the 70s are, are very interesting in terms of the choices that I, I presume LeVar was able to make in, in uh, how he uh, got these films done. Um, but yeah, some very interesting themes. First up is a film called Billy, Portrait of a Street Kid from 1977. Um, it's also known by the name of Ghetto Child. Uh, it's adapted from a book called Peoples. Um, the actual character is called Billy Peoples. Um, that book was written by Robert S. Downs. Uh, the film is directed by Steve Gethers. I'm not too familiar with him as a director. Um, but yeah, this is a, just a really, really interesting film, I thought. It, covers a whole load of different uh, themes um, that are still relevant today, I guess, uh, in terms of uh, education, in terms of um, kids from difficult backgrounds who are trying to better themselves. Um, so in this film, LeVar is playing a street kid. He's fatherless. Um, he's getting work. He's getting menial kind of labor jobs. Um, and he does want to better himself and um, he manages to get a job cleaning out kennels at a veterinary clinic but this is enough to inspire him to want to become a vet um, and so that then leads to him wanting to take night classes and education, uh, further his education um, and he meets inspirational teachers there as a math teacher that really wants to uh, see him do well. Um, he also meets uh, a young girl whilst he's doing his studies um, and unfortunately gets her pregnant. Um, but yeah, we then get into all these kinds of just interesting subject matter about, um, you know, actually wanting to better your life, actually wanting to get out of the, the rut of being you know, a ghetto child, if you like, um, and uh, and just really motivate yourself to do better. Uh, and for the 70s I just think this is just a really kind of interesting film I mean if you think of a lot of films that came later on um, when they tackle this kind of stuff it's more there about sort of I don't know angry and unmotivated kids in schools and the teacher having to take a stance to try and get them motivated in education and things like that um, so I really thought this film did a really great job of just showing look here's a fairly normal kind of kid if you like but um, um, but yeah he's in a difficult situation he doesn't have money he's got no father um, but he does want to better himself uh, but nonetheless you know the environment that he lives in makes it very difficult I mean he's got a friend there who's a drug addict um, and um, yeah and then when he gets into the education system although he's trying his best to uh, get his uh, exams um, he struggles with that and, and actually fails and this then really affects his motivation um, as does the fact that uh, um, he's unfortunately got his girlfriend pregnant as well um, and uh, so yeah this tentatively could lead to a very sort of downward spiral for him. Um, so the way that the film tackles all of these different things I think is just really fascinating. Um, it's a pretty good script I think um, um, and there's some very interesting moments in it. Uh, Ozzie Davis is in this as a, a, a doctor who um, 
assists Lavar's Burton, Lavar Burton's character um, when he's at a moment of despair, um, and it's a really, really sort of touching scene when they, you know, talk about helplessness and uh, you know, thoughts of suicide, and um, and uh, the Doctor actually reveals to him, you know, his own sort of struggles with. Um, mental health back in his youth um, and uh, yeah really quite an amazing scene um, as is the scene um, involving uh, Tina Andrews a uh, really lovely performance from her there's a very sweet moment when the two characters meet um, but it then becomes quite a harrowing uh, matter later on uh, after she becomes pregnant and how that is dealt with in the film I won't go into sort of too much detail there but uh, very um, yeah, harrowing and shocking, um, uh, but again, with the constraints of TV, they can't uh, um, go into too much detail on all of this. But uh, um, but yeah, just overall, I think there's so many things here in this film which are just really interesting in terms of looking at social welfare and um, how the medical system can fail you if you haven't got you know insurance or money to pay for treatment um, uh, and all of those kinds of things um, you know the education system and you know how you cope with um, doing your exams and being motivated to still continue all of that kind of thing so yeah there's just a lot here that's just really good and quite inspirational I think um, so I really found that this was a uh, just a, a fascinating film, just really uh, interesting and, and I've not really seen other films that came later that deal with it in such a sort of empathetic way so I really really liked this film um, and uh, yeah I definitely think it should be more widely seen. I also just want to mention in this uh, that TK Carter has um, a brief but significant role in the film. Uh, it was one of his first films, um, but yeah, uh, T.K. Carter, um, perhaps to many more famously known for his roles in um, Walter Hill's Southern Comfort and um, John Carpenter's The Thing. Um, so yeah, very interesting to see him. Now also in 1977 I should mention that LeVar Burton appeared in the film Looking for Mr. Goodbar, uh, directed by Richard Brooks. Um, I'm not going to go into much on this one, uh, partly because I haven't watched this in a long time and also my Laserdisc copy is a bit rough, uh, but also LeVar has um, a more minor role in this. Really this is a film uh, where the main character here is played by Diane Keaton. Um, it, this was an, also an early film for um, Richard Gere. Um, next into 1978 comes the film Battered um, and this one is directed by uh, Peter Werner, uh, not too familiar with him but interestingly this one is actually co-written uh, by Karen Grassell, she also stars in the film. Karen Grassell was Caroline Ingalls in um, Little House on the Prairie um, and this film is quite a departure for her uh, and I think intentionally so I think she wanted a change um, but yeah the film uh, tackles the subject of domestic violence and it looks at three different couples um, who are each dealing with issues where the wives are getting uh, beaten by their husbands uh, so yeah quite a strong subject matter here uh, LeVar Burton plays one of the husbands um, I did find in this film uh, that the, the challenge with this film is that um, it's quite an intense look at three different couples and so just given the nature of the film itself uh, it needs to be quite quick in establishing the characters getting to the the meat of the story if you like and then finding a resolution so to try and compress all of that within a um, the timeline of the film um, does mean that some of this feels a little bit sort of rushed and forced and you're not getting enough character development on all of this um, and also the the film focuses particularly on um, the marriage of uh, Karen Grassell's character uh, and her husband who's played by Mike Farrell who's um, famous for being in the TV series uh, MASH. Uh, so as I say LeVar Burton's character he uh, his wife is played by Chip Fields um, and then the other couple is the veteran uh, actors we've got um, Howard Duff as the husband and Joan Blondell as the uh, the wife there so John 
Joan Blondell started her career back in the 30s with James Cagney and uh, th this was uh, one of her final films. I think she died possibly the following year. Um, so yeah, very interesting cast uh, and this is a very earnest uh, look at tackling a very difficult subject uh, there about domestic violence. Um, so yeah, really interesting film again to watch. Um, thoroughly recommend it. Next we have the film One in a Million, the Ron LaFleur story. Uh, this is a baseball drama um, and uh, based on a true story uh, and telling the life of Ron LaFleur and his journey from being uh, a prison inmate to becoming a very successful baseball player. Now I've got to admit I'm not a huge sports fan so uh, don't get me into talking, <laughs> trying to talk in any kind of uh, expert way about baseball or any other kind of sport because I'll sound ridiculous um, but uh, yeah nonetheless this was uh, an interesting film uh, what I particularly liked with this film was the naturalness of the baseball scenes when I mean, once uh, LeVar Burton's character Ron LaFleur uh, actually manages to you know get his tryouts with the baseball team um, the way that these scenes are filmed are very naturalistic um, in terms of the players themselves and the crowd reactions um, so yeah I particularly liked that interestingly the film is actually um, the cinematographer for this is Jordan Cronenworth who uh, went on to shoot uh, Ridley Scott's Blade Runner but yeah, no, an interesting film this. It also stars Madge Sinclair and Paul Benjamin. Um, both of these actors uh, worked together as well in Gordon Parks' uh, Lead Belly. Um, and Madge Sinclair was the queen to uh, James Earl Jones King in uh, Coming to America. And Paul Benjamin has um, starred in other films um, such as um, I Heard the Cage Bird Sing, um, uh, Escape from Alcatraz and uh, he was also in Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing. Next as we go into 1979 we have uh, another really interesting film. This one is called Dummy um, and look at the pedigree of this. It's uh, directed by Frank Perry who uh, actually directed one of my favourite films starring Burt Lancaster, uh, the very unusual and fascinating The Swimmer. Um, uh, it's scripted by Ernest Tidyman, who is famous for writing Shaft and The French Connection. Um, and the cinematography on this one is by uh, Gain Richer. Um, and uh, Gain started his career um, on Elia Kazan's A Face in the Crowd uh, and has also worked on Elaine May's A New Leaf as well as um, the nuclear war uh, drama that came out in the 80s, The Day After, and Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Um, so yeah, a lot of variation there. In this film LeVar Burton plays Donald Lang. Uh, so this is based on a true story, uh, although whenever it comes to true stories I always like to think of the Coen brothers line from uh, No Country for Old Men which is along the lines of, oh is, is, it true? is, is that a true story? And uh, Tommy Lee Jones's character um, replies, well, I can't swear to all the facts, but it's true that it's a story. <laughs> Classic line. Um, but anyway, uh, so this film uh, centers on um, Donald Lang, who is mute, uh, and he's, he, so he, he cannot speak, he cannot uh, read, um, he cannot really uh, communicate in any way. Um, and he works um, sort of loading crates at a, a dockyard. Um, the dockyard manager is played by Brian Dennehy um, and uh, uh, he goes to bars and uh, sort of uses prostitutes um, and he is arrested for the murder of a prostitute um, but here's the nub of the problem you know he's, he's arrested but he can't defend himself because he can't communicate and so coming to his assistance is a lawyer uh, played by Paul Silvino uh, who is deaf uh, so he can read lips um, but yeah that's really Donald's only hope of uh, getting help uh, to get acquitted of the charges. Um, so yeah we then enter into a very interesting dynamic because uh, the challenge is that Donald cannot face trial until he's 
uh, if you like, educated enough to be able to communicate. Uh, but this is a 20 year old kid who's never learned sign language. He's just come from a very poor background. Um, and, um, you know, he, he is the sum of his parts. Um, and so the challenge that the lawyer then has is to uh, try and get him to a state where he can actually face trial and be acquitted. Um, so the problem is, you know, um, when he's put before the court, the court decide to institutionalize him in a mental hospital so that he can get the education to um, then be able to communicate. Um, but yeah, that is the difficulty. This this guy is just so used to his ways and that his learning difficulties prevent him from um, being able to really grasp what's going on and understand sign language or anything like that. So he's not going to be able to progress and further himself. Meanwhile, the lawyer, played by Paul Sorvino, has his own challenges in that um, he's aware that uh, as time is progressing, he's finding it more and more difficult to uh, speak um, and be sure that his mouthing of words is being heard correctly. Um, so yeah, really, really interesting dynamic uh, here between the two of them. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, it leads to an interesting ending. Um, you can read up about the actual uh, events of this case, so I don't really want to go into talking about any of that at all. Um, but yeah, a very interesting film, very interesting subject matter. So there you go, those are the made-for-television movies uh, of the 70s that were made by LeVar Burton. Um, and I just think it's a really interesting range of films there. Uh, and LeVar Burton, his, his presence in all of these, you know, he's a very likeable presence. Um, and uh, so he's very sort of charismatic on the screen and uh, holds you interest. Um, so yeah, I like all of these films, um, you know, for sure. You know, the TV constraints are there and uh, they're a little bit dated for sure. Um, but yeah, the themes that are explored in each of these films are just really fascinating to me. Um, now, in 1980, uh, he does make another uh, TV movie uh, that's called Guyana Tragedy, the story of Jim Jones. Uh, like I say, this reunites him with um, the director, William A. Graham. Um, I haven't seen this film yet, so I won't talk about that. And then also in 1980, uh, LeVar Burton had a starring role in Steve McQueen's last film, uh, The Hunter, um, which was loosely, very loosely, uh, based on the life of Ralph Papa Thorson, a real life uh, bounty hunter. Um, and here you go, you can see LeVar in a scene there. Uh, so LeVar's role in this um, was as one of the people that uh, Thorson sort of arrests, if you like, um, for skipping bail. Um, but actually his character stays in the film to an extent uh, throughout because um, Thorson kind of takes a, a liking to him because of his um, skills with fixing electronics and things like that. So he has him kind of stay around his house to um, fix the TV, fix the toaster and, and, and stuff like that. It's kind of a strange role. The film overall is, a, jumbled mess to be honest it's uh it's not very well scripted um but it does have a couple of uh solid action scenes in it um and obviously it's noteworthy for being steve mcqueen's final film apparently steve mcqueen did actually push for lavar burton to be in the film uh, on the strength of having seen roots um so yeah and uh, arranged for his character to be a little bit more developed in the film uh, than it was originally written um, so yeah, an interesting uh, beginning of the 80s for LeVar Burton and end of career for um, Steve McQueen, who sadly passed away shortly afterwards. Um, but there you go. So uh, just talking there about the 70s films of LeVar Burton. I hope this was of interest. Um, apologies if you know all these films already, and uh, but if you don't, um, then hopefully there's some things of interest here. Um, like I say, all films kind of relate to each other in various ways. You can find uh, cast and crew who all work on lots of different projects that we're all interested in. So, um, yeah, keep on exploring movies. Keep enjoying watching movies. Um, please do join me again for some further videos. Uh, if you have got this far, then thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again. Bye bye.